Modern life relies on huge amounts of energy, but 80% of the world's power comes from fossil fuels, and the sector emits the majority of global greenhouse gases. Without a drastic shift to alternative sources, the catastrophic effects of climate change will be felt everywhere. But which forms of energy are the most sustainable and practical to accelerate the green transition? Vijay Vaidhiswaran, The Economist's global energy and climate innovation editor, answers your questions. How much energy needs to come from renewables to cut emissions? So the question of renewables, uh, the answer is more is better. Uh, of course, renewables are not the only form of low carbon energy. So there's a, a, a trap in the question that's embedded I'd like to take on. What we need is uh, zero carbon energy or net greenhouse gas uh, negative ways of having an energy system. Renewables are an important source of that, but nuclear energy, which is often overlooked or is controversial, could play a big role in the future as well. And we can imagine forms of uh, bioenergy that can lead to net negative kinds of emissions if done properly, that are expensive at the moment today, that could also play a role. Why isn't nuclear power used more widely when it's a clean energy source? There are strong nuclear Uh, advocates in the world who say you can't achieve the net zero carbon goals set by the Paris Climate Accord without a significant amount of the world's electricity coming from nuclear, which is in effect carbon free. Um, but the problem is really political more than technological and economic. Political because there are strong anti-nuclear movements in Germany, for example, in Japan, and a number of other countries arising from a handful of nuclear accidents Fukushima, uh, which is fundamentally uh, not a nuclear accident, but was nevertheless, nevertheless traumatized the country about the dangers of nuclear. Three Mile Island in America was an accident uh, several decades ago. And of course, Chernobyl in Europe, those are the obstacles. But if we could increase nuclear power or at least retain its share in global electricity production, it would definitely help because it is a, a virtually zero carbon source of power. How can solar power be made more efficient? In theory, All of humanity's needs can be met by, by solar power. Uh, in a couple of hours, the Earth receives more energy from the sun than all of the energy used by mankind in a year. But that's a great theory. The practicality is the conversion rate of that energy, the capture, conversion, and ultimately distribution is extremely inefficient. And so uh, we could improve the efficiency of solar panels. Uh, that could be done through better materials, uh, better chemistry. Lots of people are working on this but also how we store the energy because, of course, it's intermittent. Sun only is out for part of the day. That is, energy storage could be improved. Hydrogen, which is an energy carrier, it's like electricity. You got to make it from something, some form of energy, has a second property uh, that is it can also be used for long-term storage. So not just a few hours of storage like batteries today on the grid, but multi-season storage. Uh, you could store when you have lots and lots of hydro or lots of Uh, wind and then uh, use it during a, a peak period some months later. Uh, and that's their experiments around the world with this at the moment. And ultimately, transmission and distribution losses hey, could be improved as well. Um, and so there's lots of ways we can improve the efficiency of solar power. Should biofuels become widely used? Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, interest in biofuels, but uh, and there's some role for biofuels, but I believe it's limited. Uh, I think most of the studies that have looked at biofuels for energy uh, find that there is a real concern about a trade-off between agriculture, uh, that is for food supply, uh, and uh, growing crops for for energy. And particularly in emerging markets or in developing countries, uh, one has to be very careful uh, about giving perverse incentives, uh, or even in developed markets in the US, uh, there are subsidies for agriculture for things like corn, to create ethanol, uh, which is uh, a terrible subsidy uh, that distorts food markets and also leads to suboptimal energy markets. So I would be very, very careful uh, about using biofuels as a big part of a decarbonization strategy for the world, though in certain parts of the world, it can play a limited role. Do electric vehicles actually make a difference? Just getting an electric car uh, is just one part of a longer journey. If you plug the electric car into a grid that's predominantly coal, for example, in China uh, or many other countries around the world, uh, you're not actually doing very much uh, to enhance sustainability. It's still worth doing, the argument goes, because the internal combustion engine, which burns either petrol or, or diesel uh, in the case of, let's say, big lorries, 
is a dead end. It, you'll never get to zero carbon on that technology. Whereas electric vehicles ultimately could use a grid that's a zero carbon grid with renewables. And so it's seen as a leverage point. Can heating and air conditioning be made more sustainable? I mean, yes, there are alternatives to uh, air conditioners and heaters. Uh, heat pumps are an example that can be four times as energy efficient. But the bigger question is, how do we actually make buildings more efficient? There's a terrible problem. Britain, for example, is among the worst housing stock in, the, uh, in Europe. Uh, but around the world, uh, we often build without much attention being paid to energy efficiency. And if we start by not needing so much energy to heat and cool homes, having proper uh, triple glazed windows, for example, and, and well-constructed homes, we would actually need less of the heat and air conditioning to begin with. Thank you for watching. To read more about making energy more sustainable, click the link. And don't forget to subscribe.